All right, we're going to go through some of these problems together. These are free body diagram problems of objects that are in equilibrium or not. A um, couple issues immediately. The, vector, the vectors may not be drawn to scale. But in the first situation, you got four different free body diagrams. Uh, the net force is known. So for example, in the first one, the net force is zero. But you don't know the magnitudes of the other two force vectors. And the challenge is to figure out what they are just by knowing the net force. You should be able to do that in every situation. Um, the second situation here, the net force is 900 newtons going up. It gives you the direction and the magnitude. So you should be able to figure out the value of the missing force vector. The third situation, the net force is 60 newtons to the left, gives you the magnitude and the direction. Therefore, how much is vector D and E? Uh, the last situation is a little different because they don't give you a whole lot of information here. They just tell you the net force is 30 newtons to the right, which would mean you could figure out G immediately. Uh, G would have to be 50 newtons because if you have 50 newtons acting to the right, then 50 minus 20, those are unbalanced. That gives you 30 newtons more in the right direction. So that's the net force. So F and H just have to be equal, whatever they might be. So perhaps, you know, you can make up some numbers, but um, F, whatever value you assign to F going up, let's say this is um, 80 newtons, then H has to be the exact same amount down because they're canceling out. So the net force is only acting to the right. If you look at these other problems, um, you can probably figure it out. Take a minute on your own, but then pause my video if you like and replay it just to see if you're getting these right. All right, I'll start with the first one. Um, if the net force is zero, all forces balance. So 200 down, you must have 200 up. So that's the value of B. 50 to the right, you must have 50 to the left. So that's the value of A. That would balance those out. If in the second situation here, the net force is 900 up, you already have 200 down, so C has to be 1,100. This value has to be 1,100 newtons so that you, you get that net force. Again, the net force is the key to determining the missing individual force vectors. In this object, the net force acts to the left. Therefore, D has to be 20 newtons because 80 newtons minus 20 newtons would give you 60 newtons net to the left, more to the left than to the right. If 300 newtons act up, E has to have the exact same value of 300 newtons acting down, so they cancel. Make sure you understand this before attempting the, the next set of problems. Now, the only difference with the next set of problems uh, is that they start to name these forces. Uh, anytime you have some mass, in this case it's six kilograms, that's a scalar quantity, the, the weight force is referred to as the force due to gravity. And it's always equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity, g. And we're gonna just assume the value for g is rounded to 10 meters per second squared. It makes the mental math easier as opposed to using uh, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Just assume it's, it's 10 and it acts downward um, because the gravitational force, also known as weight, always pulls down. The main support force we use is called the normal. And the normal is a, a support force that is always acting opposite the weight force. So you will see this as a force, N-O-R-M, normal. And if it's in equilibrium, it will be equal in magnitude and opposite the weight force. So I'm just going to briefly call this the support force.
Um, uh, typically, it's 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 equal magnitude, but opposite in direction to the force due to gravity or the weight force, and that'll be true for situations where it's something resting on a level surface. So the object's not falling due to gravity, it's at rest. Those two forces cancel out. Okay, finally, um, when you apply Newton's second law, sometimes you have to figure out the relationship between the net force and the acceleration, which is mass times acceleration. And so anytime you have a zero acceleration, you're guaranteed zero times six is a zero net force. So in this case, this is an equilibrium problem like you had above where the forces have to cancel out in all directions. So if you have 15 Newtons acting to the left, you must have 15 Newtons acting to the right. If this object has a mass of six kilograms, six times 10 means it has a weight of 60 Newtons. And if this object weighs 60 Newtons, the normal force must be equal to that in the opposite direction to balance it out. So you must have 60 Newtons acting up. So as you can see, all forces in the horizontal direction are balanced, in the vertical direction are balanced. So there's zero net force, zero net acceleration. This is equilibrium. If you understood this problem, you should be able to complete the second problem and the third problem. There's only one small difference with these problems. They All right, the difference with the next two problems here is they they give you some information. Um, you've got this mass, you've got this acceleration, so you know mass times acceleration. Uh, it gives you the net force. So in this case, again, it's equilibrium, zero net force. If this object weighs or has a mass of 10 kilograms, you know that, that the weight force must be 100 newtons. And if it's in equilibrium, the normal force must be 100 newtons. But how much is the frictional force and the applied force acting in the horizontal direction, pulling to the left and the right? Well, they have to be equal and opposite because we know it's in equilibrium. And they tell you that there's this coefficient of friction, 0.2, it's described right here. All you have to understand is that the force of friction is always equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. And so in this case, you know the coefficient of friction is uh, 0.2. You already know the normal force is 100 Newtons. Therefore, if you multiply that out to determine the force of friction, you'll get 20 Newtons. So we know 20 Newtons of friction are pulling to the left. Therefore, the applied force has to be the exact same amount in the opposite direction, 20 Newtons. 20 left, 20 right cancels out. 100 Newtons down, 100 Newtons up cancels out. We have all of our forces are balanced. So the net force combined is zero. The net acceleration is zero. Once again, we have equilibrium. Now, in the next problem, we don't. We have an acceleration. You can see that. So as you read the problem, it tells you you have an acceleration. So what's the net force? Mass times acceleration. So you're guaranteed you have 10 Newtons of net force. You know the mass is 5 kilograms, so this object must weigh 50 Newtons because it's 5 times 10 is 50 Newtons. If the net force is in the same direction as the net acceleration, it must be to the right. Therefore, the forces up and down have to cancel out. So if 50 Newtons pull down, the normal force is 50 Newtons pulling up. Those are equal and opposite. But if you have 10 Newtons to the right, that means the amount of force acting to the right has to be 10 more than the amount of force acting to the left. So how would you figure that out? Well, we know the coefficient of friction is 0.1, so you could go back to this formula from above. And we know the normal force. So if you multiply those two numbers out, 
force of friction will equal mu, which is 0.1 times the normal force, the magnitude of that, that, that normal force. Um, which gives you simply 10 newtons. So if you have 10 newtons of friction, which acts to the left, how much applied force, much push to the right to guarantee a 10 newton net force? Well, it can't be an equilibrium. It has to be 10 newtons more than that. Therefore, the only answer is 20 newtons. It's unbalanced, more to the right, so the net force is to the right, 10 newtons more to the right. It gives you that net acceleration. Okay. If you understood that, try the last two problems on your own, and we will discuss your results.